Yo people, what's going on? Welcome back to Blaker's Spirit, home of all like my combat sports like content, so boxing, UFC, karate, whatever it is. And um, yeah, today it's a it's a big video on Saturday. We've got Regis Progre defending his WBC title, Danielito Zoria, um, in his hometown of New Orleans, defending defending that belt. We just had uh, Tuafumu Lopez absolutely smash Josh Taylor last Saturday at Madison Square Garden for the WBO Super Lightweight title. Um, and there's just loads, there's loads of stuff that's happened on during the week between different uh, fighters in the 135 pound division, 140 pound division. They're, big, they're near enough the same. It's easy to float in between the two weight divisions, only five pounds difference. We're just gonna talk about what's going on this week and what potential matchups we could be seeing next. Now what's crazy is that in this in these two divisions, there's around nine fighters, are, I would say, that are at the top or around that area. Maybe not so much in the rankings, but just in the public domain that are, I've been calling each other out all, from all different angles, for different weight classes. But what I find interesting is that they all seem to be, they all, these nine, they all seem to be linked. Even though there's, there's like, I don't know, 10 or 15 other fighters that are operating at a high level. But there's Tiffany Lopez, there's Josh Taylor, well, I'm not sure, he, he said he's moving up to world to weight, so I'm not sure if he's gonna stick around for much longer. But there's Regis Progre, Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia, Roly Romero, and then from out of nowhere, Adrian Broner, who just returned last weekend against Bill, Bill Hutchinson, the attorney. He, he, he fought an attorney, now I guess he's got to work for him. That's what, he said, that's what he said the deal was in the press conference. But he called out Regis Progre after beating Bill Hutchinson, which was at welterweight at 147 pounds. So he's willing to move back down to super lightweight to fight uh, Regis Progre. And let's be honest, like I said, the 145, 135 pound division, apart from the heavyweights, that's the money division right now. That is the money division. Unless you're someone fighting Canelo Alvarez, unless you're a heavyweight, this is the money division. There's so many names, so many different fights, so stacked. Um, there's pay-per-view attractions, social media stars, I guess you could say in the case of Ryan Garcia. So yeah. It's it's interesting that Brony immediately wants to he wants to go back straight down there, even though that probably is his best way anyway. But and he specifically targeted Progre, less Progre because um, literally uh, Devin Haney, is it Devin Haney, Andy Hearn uh, also want to make that fight with Progre, and apparently Devin Haney is going to be at ringside uh, for that fight. Um, so who knows if Progre wins, which he's expected to do, gets a voluntary it's a voluntary defence. I don't even think the guy's fighting in the top 15 of the WPC, so um, he should win that, and then they get Haney in the ring, blah, 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 blah trash talk, and they, they get it sorted. But although Haney wants to move up to 140, and he said, you know, he finds it tough to make weight to 135, now he's finding it tougher. He thinks he could do it at 140 for a bit, and, you know, he, he, that's, so that's what he clearly said, that's what he wants to, that's what he wants to do next, but box the boxing fraternity, boxing fans, like myself, I thought Lomachenko won that. Very close fight. I don't think it was like a robbery, what people were saying. Um, I could understand if Haney, if Haney, if judges gave it to Haney, because it was so close, but I personally thought Loma just edged it. But um, but I think a lot of people want to see that that rematch again, just to give Loma a fair chance. It's up to him, Haney, he's the undisputed, he's got the belts. And not only not only the Lomachenko fight, I think people want to see the Shakur Stevenson fight. You know, we saw after how after he uh, beat Lomachenko, he came in the ring saying, he's like, uh, I'm the number one, I'm the number one. And Shakur was like, for now, for now you're the number one. I'm coming and he is coming. And I, I, there's no doubt Shakur Stevenson is a future world champion. And Shakur Stevenson even went all the way to go to Haney's like uh, undisputed party, I guess it was. Um, I don't know if that, I just saw on a Twitter thing that apparently it was a party for like his, his win against Lomachenko, although that, that was a few weeks ago. So quite a late party but um and he literally sent him a bottle saying sign the contract so I don't know if his contract's actually been offered to Haney from Balbauer and top rank very likely because obviously Haney's a free agent now and we know he's talking to Matchroom so that could be Balbauer and trying to get him back in because that would be a huge fight Haney and Stevenson uh, yeah huge fight I think that's actually bigger than the Lomachenko fight in terms of just 
overall eyes on, on the sport. I think the Haley Lomachenko fight did about 150k pay per view buys. Somewhere around that's been that's what's been reported. I think Stevenson, I think Shakur, Devin Haney, I think that, that would do 300 to 400k, I think. So you're talking about double number of pay per view buys. And of course, uh, we've got Javante Tank Davis, who's coming off a huge win over Ryan Garcia, but bless him, he's not having the greatest of times. Let's just say he hates that judge at the moment. Um, <laughs> Based on that phone call, he really isn't he really isn't the biggest fans of that judge. But we saw his coach, Calvin Ford, um, come up, um, say on, on the ropes YouTube or talking about how he wants Haney. Tank want, or he wants Tank to fight Haney next. He wants him to be that guy sitting on the top of the front, sitting at the top. People coming after him. Um, so that's and that you know, it's weird because you think Tank Davis He's arguably the biggest pay-per-view boxer in the US, well, American pay-per-view boxer, but he hasn't actually got a current. He's got the WBA World Lightweight, but he hasn't got the WBA Super World Lightweight. So, I don't know. I think that just shows how little the sanctioned bodies or these boxing belts, or these boxing belts that count less and less now. Um, I think we can all agree that they should, they should just be won. It's absolutely ridiculous, I have thought. But again, I know Haney said he wants to move up to 140, but if I was him, I'd be so tempted to just do one more fight at 135, like, like if he would against Stevenson or Tank Davis, that would be even bigger than Stevenson. That, that would be closer to a million um, if he buys that. Might not be over a million, like the Garcia one, but it, I think it wouldn't be far off. I think it would be 800 to 900 K, um, just because of all the build-up and stuff. So again, that's, an, that's another one. But is he gonna stick? Is he gonna stick down one for one more, two more fights? I think he could, but there's no way you could put like a rehydration clause in, which we know Tank's team and uh, Leonard Elevey, because they like to act like the A side. Apparently, they are they are, they, they are the A side. So they decide there's a rehydration clause. We you know a lot of fighters aren't a big fan of that, and I don't think a lot of fight fans are either, because um, it, it does drain you. So. And we saw Ryan Garcia complain about that as well. And we also saw Mario Barrios after the Garcia fight tweet about it. So I think if Haney and Tank were to ever fight, I think they would have to be no rehydration or anything like that. I think it would just have to be straight 135. There you go. Let's fight. And talking of Tank, one of his previous opponents, Roly Romero, um, he... <laughs> He recently said how Ryan Garcia's been messaging him and how he wants how um, he wants that fight to avenge that old guy. That was a terrible stoppage, awful stoppage. That's one, you know I tweeted about it. That's one of the worst stoppages I've ever seen in a fight. Um, very dodgy. But we saw Roly Romero. He's now the WB A or O. Who cares? He's one of them. Okay, he's one of them. He's got one of the belts. That's super lightweight. And now Ryan Garcia apparently wants to fight him. Um, I think that makes much more sense for Ryan Garcia. I think Roly Romero definitely a beatable opponent for him. Um, I think that'd be a great fight as well, just because both of those guys love coming forward. Um, so yeah, that could be a right bar barn burner. But then we also saw Tio Lopez saying, "Oh no, Ryan Garcia has been messaging me, and he wants to fight me as well." So Ryan Garcia clearly wants another big fight soon. He's seen how good that Tank Davis money was, and I think he wants it again, and that's exactly how it should be. That is how it should be. That's all. That's all fans of boxing. You've all, always wanted biggest fights, biggest money. They deserve it. Let's just get it on. We're finally getting Spence Crawford after all after all these years. So yeah, and they and in the press conferences they look pretty happy at the moment because I think they know what's coming in their in their purses. So um, again, that is that's another big fight in that division. That we could see, but to Lopez, he wants 100 million apparently. So <laughs> Ryan Garcia can somehow get a huge, like I don't know, fashion brand deal or Gucci brand deal or whatever, and get 100 million. Then maybe that might tempt Lopez, but he ain't retired. It's, he's doing a Tyson Fury. And then finally, we've got Adrian Broner, A B. He's fine. <laughs> he's come back. Uh, he beat Bill Hutchinson fairly easily after. It couple of years out of the ring. But that was at welterweight, but he wants to fight Progre at 140, he wants to come down. I think he'll have a big fight, I think that's as good. There's no way anyone's telling me he's not one of the most entertaining fighters 
the Corkson. He is. He is one of the most... And the fact that he's with Don King as well, I think, like, the memes, the jokes, um, the entertainment, I think that is such a... That's such a money, big money fight for anyone in those in those divisions. Um, you know, he could really... He could really pick his hand at any of them because he's such a character. He, and he's a great trash talker, such a great trash talker, excellent microphone skills. You're gonna get Dong Dong King uh, with his all fuzzy up, fuzzy up hair, looking like he's just been electrocuted by a thousand volt, wearing his uh, denim jacket that looks like that looks like he's been under a, in, the, in the wardrobe for like 20 years. So you know. Those things together, I think he, he could definitely, he could definitely fight one of the bit, one of the big boys. Just throw him straight back in. And to be honest, if he lost, he'd probably make a crap ton of money, and he'd probably go again, um, you know. So, and now that he's got an attorney in Bill Hutchinson, so he can sort out all his issues, he doesn't he doesn't need to worry about all that. He can just crack on with his fighting. So yeah, there you go, guys. Just a recap of all like the big fights that could potentially happen in the super lightweight, lightweight division. 135, 140 pounds. All the all the big fights that could happen. All the playing parts. They're all linked, which is what I find, which is the most case for any of these stack divisions. They're always all linked. Just so many moving parts. Uh, we'll see what happens when if Pro Gray defends his defends his belt against Zaria. See how good he is. I think a, a finish is expected there. I think a TKO or a KO is expected in that fight. So. We'll see what happens, see if he faces off with Haney afterwards. So many moving parts, but let's just carry on this momentum. That's what I would say to these guys, just carry on the momentum. Boxing's having a flat, like, best, one of the best years in ages, it seems, at the moment. So just let's just keep it going. Big fight in one of those divisions in the, in the next the next couple of months. Um, we could do more because there's so many fighters, so yeah. Let's stay tuned and you let me know which fight you want to see the most. Okay, that's all. Thanks for listening. Oh, and subscribe as well. That's one more thing. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Thank you.